Tech, where we discuss four tech topics in just four minutes. A major cyber attack that shut down the internet after a little known company fell victim to hackers. Jason, break this down for us. What do we know? Sure. This is a company called DIN, and they're what's called a DNS. You can think of them like a middleman. You sit down at your computer and say, I want to go to this website, and they point you in the right direction. Uh, now, when a DDoS or denied distribution of service attack happens, the DNS is flooded with requests, so getting to your favorite website can be slow or even impossible, uh, as it was in this case. Uh, this was a, a massive attack, the largest we've seen of this kind. Um, but as more and more devices are connected to the Internet of Things, we're only going to see frequency and scale grow. James, this is scary stuff. Can we prevent it? It's terrifying. I mean, I, I don't know at this stage. I mean, it's taken us into real uncharted waters. It's the whole idea that the Internet of Things, these random devices, could be used as a launch pad for one of these DDoS attacks is really, really scary. I mean, it really, really ramps the security game for everyone. Anthony, you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think it illustrates also how, you know, these um, services like DIN are sort of like the kind of the main vulnerability point because you don't have to attack a bunch of different websites. You just attack them. So I think we're going to see a lot of energy in terms of beefing up their own security and that similar services. It's so terrifying that we know so little about this company and it has such a big impact in connecting us to these websites. Well, a company we do know a lot about is Apple, and they're set for another unveil. The tech giant is expected to announce a fresh look to its MacBook lineup. Anthony, what can we expect tomorrow? Well, I think the, uh, the main thing that we've heard from rumors and speculation, maybe a few leaks, um, is the MacBook Pro, and there are going to be two big additions. One is, is fairly straightforward. It's just the power button. It's going to you know, have a fingerprint scanner, just like your iPhone. Um, the other is sort of a strip at the top where the buttons will sort of change depending on the software that you're using. So maybe you're watching a video, and you'll see like volume controls, or maybe you're using editing software, and you'll see different buttons for that. James, it's been years since we've had this. Is it time? I think so, yeah. I mean, you know, we heard so much buzz around the new iPhone and everything else, but, you know, the MacBook has this huge and very loyal install base. And they've been crying out for some, this, this type of thing. Look, we're mo moving into a world of new, more di dynamic displays. And I think that this is going to be absolutely key for Apple. Also, fingerprint scanning, anything that brings more security into our device world is good. Jason, is it enough to keep people to stay on board and buy a Mac? I think so. And what's really exciting is not even this MacBook, but the next one. There's a rumor that it's going to have a programmable e-ink keyboard like a Kindle does. Um, so every key could, in theory, be individually programmed, and they can change based on what programs you're using on the computer. James, do you think we'll see anything with the iPad? iPad Pro? Um, I'm not really expecting too much on that tomorrow. I think it's going to be mainly MacBook focused, but who knows? Hopefully we see some fresh products. Well, moving to a story that's not so fresh, a skunk lock that fights back. The lock that stops bite thieves by making them vomit. James, this is disgusting. What's the story? Is it disgusting or is it brilliant? You know, we all live in New York and like, there's so much threat of having our bikes stolen. So, yeah, the whole idea with this is they're raising their money on Indiegogo um, to develop, as you say, the skunk lock. It contains this pressurized, noxious chemical deterrent, which, as you say, will make a thief hurl. Basically, they get a certain amount of the way through the lock and bang, it unleashes. And, you know, if you're within about two feet of that lock, you're going to be puking up. But, Jason, is it legal? Is it safe? You know, here's the thing is, like, it's definitely going to deter someone, but if you have a particularly persistent thief, uh, once the gas is out, it's out, so they're going to keep cutting through, or you're left with a, a bike lock that's got a cut in it, and then you've got to get a new lock anyway. Anthony, have we gotten to this point where these are just going to steal, regardless of going to puke or not? Well, I think the thing about any lock is, is not that it's going to deter everyone, but the point is to, like, make it really, like, especially if you've got other locks in that bike rack, is to say, I'm not going for that one, I'm going for the other bike. <laughs> James, would you buy it? Uh, you know, I actually use a heavy-duty chain for my bike, which is an absolute pain, kind of lugging it around when I'm riding it and stuff like that. So if this gives me a lighter and kind of more affordable option, then, yeah, I would consider it. I mean, you know what they say about karma. <laughs> the U.S. Army is testing self-driving supply trucks. Jason, what does this mean for our, our soldiers? Yeah, it's, hopefully we'll make them a lot safer uh, when they're out and deployed. Uh, we've heard a lot about self-driving cars with Uber and Google for the last few years. And now the Army uh, started the program in, in 2004 with DARPA. It, so now it's, it's finally coming to fruition. It's what's called a leader-follower system. So there are two soldiers driving the very first van, uh, but then up to seven more could be following. Uh, and instead of having to drive and focus on the road, the soldiers who are in those vehicles can be looking out on the road for danger and 
uh, as lookouts, they're much safer than as drivers. James, I see all the pros of this. Are there any cons? Um, you, you know, obviously the technology is going to have to be really, really tested. I mean, there's a lot of gaps between these vehicles. Kind of that could raise some kind of safety issues. But this is the future. I mean, a lot of militaries around the world are looking at this. I recently spoke to the Israeli military about how they're looking to deploy autonomous vehicles on the country's border with Gaza. So, you know, this is the next stage. We're just going to see more and more of this as we move forward. Anthony, if it's successful, are we going to see more of this? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that I mean self-driving in general is obviously really taking off, um, and I think that you know, people have opportunities outside the really crowded highways in America, but maybe in other countries as well. Great stuff, guys. We'll have to leave it at that. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think using the hashtag 4 for 4 tech